Russell Rockwell, and this is my presentation for the case study, um, sorry, case analysis, entitled Conscious Refusal. So what exactly happened? So on July 6, 2002, University of Wisconsin Stout student went to the Kmart in Menominee, Wisconsin to fill a prescription for oral contraceptive birth control pills. Uh, the only pharmacist on duty, Neil Nosen, asked if she intended to use the prescription for contraception. When she replied in the affirmative, Nosen, a Roman Catholic, refused to fill the prescription, explaining that to do so would be against his religious beliefs. She thought he was kidding. Now, initially, those were my first thoughts as well, until I was able to understand both, uh, both sides of the story. So the first question here, was the young woman's autonomy violated? I found a good quote here. Uh, the responsibility to respect patient autonomy, to understand that no one knows me better than me, and to respect patient and colleague choices, even when the professional does not agree. So in this case, uh, the answer is that absolutely her autonomy was violated. She went to the pharmacist to get the pills that she had prescribed to her by another medical professional. It was her body, and she has the right to contraception if she desires. It was understandable that the pharmacist may be against this according to his religion, but she still has the right to access the pills. If not from him, then she should be instructed by this pharmacist to where and how to fill a prescription. This woman was in college, and it would not have been the right time for her to have a child. It would have had serious impacts on her life, which at the time she did not desire. It is her right to make this decision and to have access to these pills. Her autonomy was not respected by this pharmacist. So the next question. Was the pharmacist's autonomy violated? Another good quote I found. The right to refuse does not include a right to obstruct. The patient must be informed about the intent to refuse and alternative courses of action. Otherwise, it becomes a troubling imposition of pers personal beliefs on patients, notably female patients. This quote perfectly explains the situation for the pharmacist. He absolutely had the right to exercise his autonomy and refuse to fill the prescription, but he took it too far when he obstructed her from filling the prescription another way. My answer to the question, was the pharmacist's autonomy violated, is no. He acted with his right of self-governance. He took it much too far, and this is why uh, what he did was a problem. But his autonomy was not violated. So next, uh, the young woman in this case stated, I have no problem with his beliefs, but you can't let your beliefs interfere uh, with your personal responsibilities. Maybe he should consider a different line of work. Uh, do I agree with this, uh, with this statement? So again, another quote here, uh, clinical depression, or sorry, <laughs> clinical decision making ideally brings together uh, physician expertise and patient values to arrive at a treatment that maximally benefits the patient. Religion and spirituality often shape patient values in ways that run counter to what physicians might consider best for the patients. So initially, my first reaction is to agree with the woman in this situation. Uh, after gaining a better understanding of the situation, I still carry many of the same feelings, but with more respect towards the pharmacist. She is absolutely correct and that he cannot let his beliefs interfere with his job. Uh, in this case, it is unsure if she means the initial filling of the prescription or the blocking of her, of her access to the pills. I will assume uh, it is the complete blocking of access, which I totally take her side. He has uh, anatomy and can refuse to help her, but he needs to allow and help her uh, access this medication from someone else. Uh, I do think that he should uh, potentially consider another line of work just because uh, he would not have to deal with instances that are completely against his religion on a daily basis. But with that being said, he does have the right to be a pharmacist. He's in a line of work that helps people, which is honorable, uh, and the whole job is not based around filling contraceptive prescriptions. It is only a small part that he objects to, which is allowed. Um, of course, he is not allowed to take it as far as he did, but he is still within his rights. So my answer is that I do agree with the woman's statement. I do believe that his uh, beliefs should not get in the way of his job. I also do agree that he should look for another line of work, but only because it may be better for him to avoid uh, a work that goes against his religion, not because he should uh, not be doing that sort of work. 
So what role, if any, does the employer play in this situation? How could employer leadership avoid a situation like this in the future? Um, so the employer needs to set a better standard for following this, uh, the standard of care. In this situation, a punishment could be awarded uh, to show other employees that the standard of care needs to be followed. Uh, the employer sets a tone for how the pharmacy will operate. Uh, operating the pharmacy in a fair manner while strictly adhering to the standard of care will set the tone uh, of how important the standard of care truly is. If the employer wants, uh, wants to award a punishment for this situation, it needs to be clear that it is not a punishment for the initial refusal, but rather the blocking of access, which is not within his rights as a pharmacist. Um, so in conclusion, um, another good quote here. Uh, the Code of Ethics for Pharmacists states, A pharmacist respects the autonomy and dignity of each patient by encouraging patients to participate in decisions about their health. In all cases, a pharmacist respects personal and cultural differences among patients. Um, so in conclusion, the pharmacist needs to have respect for the woman's decisions to use contraceptive. And he may not agree with it, but it is his, it is his duty to respect uh, her choice. He did not have to fill the prescription himself, but he did not have the right to stop her from getting uh, the prescription. He took his personal beliefs too far, and it overshadows his original duty. So here are my resources. Uh, thank you so much for the time. I hope you enjoyed my presentation.